Morning guys, it's been a little bit. Let's go for a walk. So good morning guys. I hope all is well with you all this holiday season. It's been a while since I made a video. Some things have transpired during that time, one of which being that my family and I, we all caught the thing. You know, the thing. And that had me laid up pretty good for some time. But I'm feeling a little bit better. Good enough to go through a stroll through the woods. I figured we'd shoot a video. Maybe do some tracking. Uh, maybe you can learn some things along the way. Not maybe, you will. Unless you're not new to bushcraft. In which case you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. But uh, yeah, we'll go for a little walk and then have ourselves a little uh, noontime fire and then head back, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Well, guys, we didn't have to go far and we found some tracks, canine of some sort. You can always tell the difference between canine and feline track in that a canine's track tends to be a little bit more rectangular in shape, whereas a feline track would be more condensed, more circular. Canine tracks make that star pattern. Question is, is it domestic or wild? There's a couple of things you can look for to assert the difference. One of them being that wild dog tracks tend to make more of a significant star pattern. Their paws, the spaces between, are less because they have stronger structure than domestic pets. And then another thing you can look for to tell the difference between wild dog and domestic dog is their actual walking pattern. Wild dogs will tend to walk in more linear patterns. Everything in nature generally is more efficient with their energy expenditure, meaning they're not going to do a whole lot of useless movement. They're going to walk in straight patterns. They're going to sniff. They're going to look around. They're going to pick their direction and they're going to go. Whereas wild dogs, if you ever take your dog out into the woods, they're all over the place. You'll see the tracks going in circles. They're just, they're absolutely crazy with their movement patterns. So I'm going to assert that this is more than likely wild. Looks like he wasn't alone, he or she. I'm not an expert enough to tell the difference. But uh, let's follow these tracks and see where they go. Well, it looks like this pup's been moving off into the wood line. Definitely wild. For the record, I'm not hunting anything, guys. Sometimes I, I just like to come out and follow the tracks, and I hunt, but just with my eyes. But, uh, yeah, looks like we're heading down towards the creek. We'll keep following them. Looks like our little fella had fun playing the balance beam game. <laughs> Animals take the path of least resistance most of the time. So while we've been following our pup, we come across yellow birch. Easy to identify. I think most anybody knows what a birch is. For the most part, it's that tree that has that paper peeling bark. Here in western New York area, we, uh, we don't grow river birch or things like that. I've, I've seen it, but it generally is in people's lawns and planted. I don't, I don't see it out in the wild too often. But we already know that we're going to have a fire today. So we're going to go ahead and stock up on some of this yellow birch. Yellow birch is a great material for fire starting and you'll see it's got when I light it it'll burn kind of dark it's because it's got oils inside of it that that's uh, very flammable very volatile lights right up you got that black smoke that comes off from it you probably can't see it you'll just have to take my word for it but uh yeah 
when traveling through the woods, you should always kind of be in the mentality of knowing what you want to do and looking for the resources to affect that as you go. Don't always bank on the fact that you're going to find a birch tree where you want to camp. We found one now, so we're going to collect now. All right, guys, now that we're down at the water, I want to show you a quick little trick. The only combustion source I've brought with me today is this big lighter. So what happens if I get this lighter wet? I used to think that getting the lighter wet meant that I would have to wait for hours to get any ignition out of that lighter, and that's actually not the case. You can dry this thing out and make it useful again. So as you can see, we've got no sparks. I'm going to shake this off rather violently. I'm going to dry the whole thing off on some of my clothes here. Blow into the cylinder violently shake it off some more and then this uh, let me get in the camera here this cylinder right here as you can see i've popped off that that metal rim that goes there it's a child safety you're going to want to pop that off i'm going to run this cylinder on some dry clothes while drying it off and trying to get all that water off from that cylinder because that's what strikes that ferrocium rod and gives you ignition blow into it a few more times check to see if you have sparks yep just like that we'll block it from the wind there we go sorry guys <laughs> Had a hard time getting it in frame. But yep, that didn't take too long. That's all you have to do if you drop the lighter in the water. It's really not a big deal. So, some of you subscribers that are actually following me and my adventures might be wondering about the Pathfinder Advanced course that I attended, partially. Didn't go so well. I, uh, I was medically pulled. I went into it a little bit sick. And um, it was accelerating my dehydration. And I was struggling with the friction fire on the first night. All the way into the second day. And my failure to get that friction fire combined with my dehydration uh, was too much. And I wound up in sort of a dangerous state and they pulled me and took me to the hospital so it was a bummer I was pretty depressed about it but uh, I'm not gonna be too hung up on it because it really was my first bump in the road so I should count myself lucky and blessed that that was the first real let down that I've had throughout this adventure and um, and you know you can learn from everything successes and failures right so that's what I'm gonna choose to do that's how I'm gonna choose to look at it and um, just plug away at the next one but uh, I do want to thank you guys for cheering me on and uh, please continue to do so, because I certainly am not done, and I will get it done. So, thanks, guys. So, we've been walking around for a little bit now, looking for things of interest. And I'm getting a little tired. If my energy seems low, it's because I'm still recovering. So I think I'm going to stop and have a small fire and cook up some coffee. And, uh, and it got me thinking, let's talk about that. Let's talk about fire in wet conditions or at the very best, damp. It's been snowing a lot. Today's a nice, bright, sunny day. But regardless, it's been snowing a lot around here. And most everything is marginal. And... Um, so, I'm going to show you what 
I look for in damp conditions to start a fire. Okay, so after rainy and wet conditions, the driest stuff you're going to find is going to be the stuff that's up off the ground. Obviously, we're looking for dead standing things. Um, you want to start with small material. All your fires should start with small material, but especially so if it's been raining and everything's wet. Now, we have that pile of birch bark that's going to burn really well, but we need fuel to continue the fire after that birch bark is burnt up and we won't get very far if we pick pieces that are too big. Now this spot I think is perfect. It provides me with enough small material that's going to be the driest because it's been up off the ground. It's been sitting in the sun so it's been drying. Most of, well, There's a good portion of this that's probably completely dry and that's going to be what I start my fire with and then I have enough material going from pinky size up to thumb size and then some that I can get all the fire I need to create just a small lunchtime fire to heat up some water. So this is perfect. But yes, in wet weather, look for a wood that's off the ground, start very small, work your way up and, um, and yeah, something like this. It's about that time. You know, it's my opinion that the best time to have a fire is during winter. I'm sure it's many of yours' opinions too. But the fire means more when it's cold. Today's not even that cold, but like a fire in the blizzard. Man, that's like, it's the best fire you can have. So while we're sitting here, friends, I'd like to thank everybody who's continued to subscribe. My subscriber base is climbing slowly, but climbing nonetheless, and I haven't even been putting out videos. So I do appreciate that, and I appreciate you guys for tuning in, even though I've been absent for the past month. Um... We'll keep plugging away with these videos. I think I'm going to do more of this kind of thing where I'll just walk through the woods and talk about things that I find, certain points of interest. From Maybe we'll just call it like a walk and learn series. I did have a plan for a polar plunge video where I was going to have myself and my brother go out into the woods and I'm going to fully kitted jump into a body of water in the middle of a snowstorm and uh, just kind of take on like that survival challenge of staving off hypothermia after falling into the water. Um, that was my plan for my next video, but catching the thing that I caught, uh, I wasn't really in any condition to be pulling some sort of stunt like that. But um, yeah, keep tuned in for the future, guys, because I am looking to do that sometime soon. Man, this hat's freaking hot sweating <laughs> it might re replace my regular hat who knows
one for myself. And some for my subscribers. Well, guys, it's looking like I have to sign off here because I'm running out of storage space on my phone. I, <laughs> I've got to be the worst, <laughs> the worst YouTube person that y'all ever watched. But, uh, yeah, whatever. It'll get better, I promise. Don't give up on me. Hey, I, uh, I hope y'all have a Merry Christmas and, and a good New Year. I know for some of us, many of us, Times have been tough recently, and um, if that's the case for you, just hang in there. Get out in the woods, get training, move your body, get yourself surrounded by nature, and just kind of forget about it for a while, you know? But uh, yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in, and y'all have a Merry Christmas.